Hi everybody, my name's Claire. Welcome back to my art channel. I've got this idea of combining techniques. So, so often with fluid art, you do a Dutch pour or you do a straight pour um, or a flip cup, you do, you do one technique. Um, I want to try and combine the techniques. So there's a couple of ways I'm gonna do that with this next pour. I'm gonna do a Dutch pour, blow the paint out with my hairdryer. Then I'm gonna do some swiping with some cell activator over the top. Um, then I'm going to let it dry and then I've got this idea of laying down a base of just clear or of normal Floetrol with no paint added and then doing some blooms and what should happen is that the Floetrol will dry but it will dry clear so it won't disturb anything that I, I've already painted so I should be basically just paint, placing some blooms on top. So because I'm doing blooms I'm going to do a sort of a meadow, a flower garden. So the bit that I'm going to pour today um, is going to be the meadow, the grass, the, the background. So I'm going to use some green, some earthy colours, some greens, um, some bronze and just a little bit of pink, which is less earthy, but just looks pretty. <laughs> um, so let me show you the colours. So these are my earthy colours. So some very familiar colours, Amsterdam bronze. Um, this one here is Pebio Earth Green and Pebio Iridescent Green Yellow. This one is brand new, you can see, because it's a perfectly clean bottle. I've just mixed it. This one is Amsterdam Sap Green. It's a very dark green, brand new. I have never, ever used this before, but I thought it would look good contrast between those, with those other greens. And then I've got a little bit of Amsterdam Persian Rose and De La Rowney Purple. Just a little hint of it because I think just green and brown on its own is a bit dull. So I'm just adding a little bit of contrast for the base. Um, all mixed to my Dutch pour consistency. So mixed two parts flood flow control to one part paint to three quarters of a part water, except for the iridescent ones, I add slightly more water, so one part water. Um, but I'll put that recipe in the description of this video for you. So this canvas is 18 by 24 inches. Um, it's a canvas that I've reused, so um, you can see an old Dutch pour underneath. Um, I, this paint, this particular piece was varnished as well, so it was very glossy. So I couldn't pour, well I didn't want to risk pouring straight onto it. So I've just applied some gesso, which just makes it really rough and chalky, so the new paint will stick um, to this. Um, I've put push pins in the back, so I can lift this up really easily, I can get my hands right underneath. So I want to do a Dutch pour first of all, um, and my uh, my sort of idea to lay the colours on, but then to blow with the hairdryer from the bottom upwards, but in sort of waves. So it looks like, maybe it looks like grass, but it's, it has a sort of upwards motion. Um, so just having a think about how I'm going to put the colour on. I think I am just going to drizzle it quite randomly onto the canvas at uh, all oh, and to cover most of the canvas I think let's see what happens Now that should be plenty. Right, to make sure that this edge is covered, I think I'll just blow down first to cover this edge and then blow upwards with the hairdryer. Right, so there's a few gaps, but that's fine because I can dab those in. That The bottom and the edges are mostly covered. So now I'm just going to, um, yeah, blow upwards. Yeah, here goes.
is this is beautiful so i'm now just going to add just a few little swipes um, and i'm going to use white cell activator for that so i've got that in this pot and this is mixed three parts uh, australian fluoritrol to one part white paint amsterdam white paint so I think I'm just going to put some, I've got a, um, a little palette and I've put some activator on the end there and then I'm just going to gently just sort of weave this up in just a few places. So I'm just getting some on the edge of the palette knife. It seems a shame actually because I actually quite like it like this but I, I want to try it, different techniques. So let's just start at the bottom. So what I found myself doing was lifting the palette knife off then. So I've got some beautiful lacing down here. So I can really start to visualise my flower garden. It's I can see I, I I can see how it's forming now. Um, so at the top here, I'll show you at the top first. I've got some of these really beautiful um, sort of Dutch pour waves. Um, so you can see where the colours are really blended with the Dutch pour. But then if I bring you down towards the bottom, you've just got this wonderful, wonderful lacing. So this is the bot. This is where the this is at the bottom of the of the grass, bottom of the plants, nearer the roots, nearer the soil. Really, really beautiful lacing, and then it just all sort of wanders upwards, and then gets fainter. What I was really trying to do with the small palette knife. Let me show you on this one. So spread the spread the cell activator across the paint. Oops, here, and then turn my palette knife on its edge and then just bring this up to a point. Um, and I think that's that's working really well. Um, it does look a bit odd still. It looks a little bit strange in some places, um, but the really good thing is that I'm then going to be doing more to this. So if there's bits, for example, I don't particularly like this splodge of pink here, that's fine. I will put a flower, I'll put a bloom right there. So um, this is only phase one, but so far so good. I'm really pretty happy with this. Um, so I'll be back when this is dry. Um, for the blooms. So the first thing you must must do is sieve your fluoritrol. So fluoritrol has gets loads of bits in it um, and even when you sieve it and if you let that sit you must sieve it again because it just dries up and it just gets all these really stringy disgusting bits and if you leave them in um, there'll be ridges on your painting, texture in your painting. So Always sieve your flood fluoritrol before using it. And then just another tip, don't let that sit and dry because it will ruin your sieve. So I always tend to have a pot of, of water nearby so I can just put it straight in the water, otherwise it, it will get ruined. So I'm just going to pour this straight on the canvas so it's just plain flood fluoritrol this bottle here um, so this is going to dry clear so the layer that I'm going to put on is simply going just to help the the blooms to to spread out so um, I'm just feels very strange but I'm just going to pour it on and then I'll blow it out with the hairdryer I hope that's enough if it's not I'll just sieve some more So I'm finding that really difficult to blow it out with the hairdryer because it's thicker. Um, it's just not moving very well. I'm just going to scrape it, add some water and then pour it back on. 
Right, that's now about the consistency of Dutch pour paint. Let's try again. I'm going for pinks and purples and also some gold and yellow because I think some yellow will actually just make it a bit fresher, a bit more, bring it to life a little bit. So I've got my cell activator. That is mixed three parts Australian Floatrol to one part white Amsterdam paint. So that's there, ready to go. So as I said, all these are all Dutch pour consistency. Now, where was that bit I didn't like? I think it was there. It's just do I need now? Do I want a plan to this? Do I want? Or just going to do them randomly? Not really sure. I haven't really thought this far ahead. Do I want pink flowers and purple flowers, or pink and purple flowers? Right. I'm just going to go for one in the centre. Well, down here. So two drops I've put on them. Let's add some yellow. I will go in afterwards and just um, create some petal effects. And I really quite like the yellow in that. Really like that. So I think I'm just going to do several flowers, different shapes, different sizes and different colour combinations. probably overdone it with the blooms um and but this is just so fascinating so interesting because um let me find one to show you this bloom here can you see the paint has sunk um and then the flower troll is on top so it looks around here it looks very very pale and washed out but obviously that flower troll is going to dry clear and the same here look so it looks very very pale but I think that's going to dry really dark because it's just it looks pale because the flower trolls on top and the paints underneath. Um, so some of them haven't done that. So this one hasn't. This one, the yellow is quite obvious. But again, here on the edges, the flower troll is on top. So as you see it now, I think these blooms are going to change dramatically. Now, this fascinates me. So I wonder if it's just because I haven't got the paint in the flower troll base. But look at the spikes. Um, the ones I did first are really the ones that has happened to. The others, they're doing it. Oh, look what's happened here. So maybe because the Floratrol is a different consistency, it doesn't have the same paint in it, it doesn't, it's not the same product really. Um, it's, it's doing something quite strange, but so interesting. Yeah, look, it's all going quite spiky. So wow, fascinated, absolutely fascinated to see how this will turn out.
Right, it is now totally finished and I've got lots of explaining to do. I did lots off uh, on camera and off camera, which I wasn't, I didn't tell you I was going to do in advance. So, um, absolutely loved the result of it, um, but it wasn't finished. It needed something. I needed a board. I needed something. It was too big and too chaotic. I had to have something to break it up, which is why I added the gold. But before I got to that, let me show you up close. Um, I very, very carefully and delicately um, painted around the edge of every single flower because the, the edges of the flowers just weren't very distinct at all. Um, they're really spiky and the more I think about it, I think that's just a reaction between the paint and the fluoratrol that they didn't combine properly. But what a cool effect. Um, really like it it wasn't what i was expecting but it, it's just really quirky really pretty um so yeah i've defined all the blooms and then um i added frog tape to create the gold border the gold frame and then i've outlined it with a posca pen so the idea was that i had some flowers going over the top of the frame and then some going underneath the frame um, just to give it a sense of depth now i don't know if you saw but i had an accident here because I had this flower was was visible all over and then I decided to do my permanent black marker by accident through the middle of the flower so the flower had to go because it had a line through it so it's there's a bit of a gap there on the frame but actually I think it blends in really really well still um, so I had to put that flower beneath the frame so if you look more at the base, you can see the, the wonderful lacing from the swipes all the way along the bottom. And it's a little bit darker there. And then as you come up to the top, looking at the base, the greens, you can see it gets really floaty where you've got the Dutch pour um, design at the top. So, so happy with the colours. I'm really happy with the composition, with the balance of it. There's just something quite magical about it. It just, so just to me, it looks like a little magical garden. Um, almost like you'd expect to see little fairies in the in the in the garden because it's there's something quite fun and magical about it um let me know what you think it's a bit different um i've done so many different things to this so dutch pour swipes blooms embellishments loads let me know what you think which bits do you like are there any bits that you would have done differently um, i'd love to know other people's ideas great thank you so so much for watching um, take care, everyone. Bye.